Шановні пані та пано Ladies and gentlemen, their excellencies, the president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, and the president of Latvia, Ehils Levitz. The statement by the president of Ukraine. Thank you. Good afternoon, fellow Mr. President, journalists, um, everyone. I'm very happy to welcome once again in Ukraine, the president of uh, Latvia, Echels Lavets, and uh, today, together with the president and the first ladies of our countries, we've uh, uh, commemorated the memory of our fallen soldiers at the Lichakiv Cemetery. This is already the third visit of uh, Mr. President since the beginning of the full-scale uh, invasion of Russia to Ukraine. Just as the previous uh, uh, visits, this uh, visit has become a very historic and notable. We've uh, just signed a joint declaration um, in support uh, of uh, Latvia to uh, the full uh, European, Euro Atlantic integration of Ukraine. Mm. And only with Ukraine, the European project will become complete. Only with NATO, only with Ukraine, NATO will become very strong, a uh, strong defender, a uh, defender of our common values. And Ukraine, through its fight for the freedom and for the free Europe, has united the European Union, our invincibility and unbreakability over the course of this year of full-fledged war, uh, definitely proves that Ukraine's contribution to the Euro-Atlantic security would be unique. And I'm very grateful to you, Mr. President, and uh, to all the people of Latvia for their consistent support to Ukraine, to our people on this path of Euro-Atlantic integration towards the EU, towards NATO, and it's this fight for our land, for our lives. And today, Mr. President, together with uh, the other dignitaries, will participate in the special conference that we are holding for the first time. This conference is called United for Justice. Uh, it will take place in Lviv for the first time as an experienced lawyer, as the person who is well aware of uh, the operating principles of the Euro-Atlantic institutions, Mr. President, personally, and uh, Latvia will be a very significant supporters and uh, uh, of, of Ukraine in making sure that the Russian torturers and criminals will take responsibility for their actions. Uh, today we've discussed also the establishment of a special tribunal on, uh, committing on the crime of aggression against Ukraine, uh, the preparation process for the resolution in the UN General Assembly is in progress, and uh, we're also cooperating with the International Court and the uh, legal institutions of the EU. One of the aspects of Russia's uh, responsibility is uh, further uh, sanctions policy. Latvia has recognized Russia as the state sponsor of terrorism, and uh, on the basis of this recognition, Latvia supports this overall sanctions policy. And today we've discussed how we could further increase the sanctions pressure against Russia even before the full-fledged uh, aggression, uh, the full-scale ag aggression of uh, Russia to Ukraine. Latvia has provided uh, Ukraine with military support, particularly the stingers. That was the right signal to the overall European community, a signal of a true support to our defense over the course of this year. Uh, the Latvian security and defense support and assistance has remained very significant and notable and I'm very, very grateful to you, to the government, to the people of Latvia. And uh, today we've uh, discussed how, together with our allies and partners, how else we could reinforce and our soldiers and um, make sure we liberate our territories as soon as possible. We've provided with the list of our emergent needs uh, in the field of defense 
and during the next visit, uh, uh, next part of this visit, we'll, uh, we'll talk about the rebuilding process, more specifically in the Chernihiv region. We'll also talk about the demining process and demining support. And surely, I'm very grateful to Mr. President and to Latvia for their readiness to support Ukraine, to support the Ukrainian peace formula, as well as to engage to the implementation of its points. Mr. President, thank you for your visit, for, for the visit of your team, the First Lady of Latvia, for your great support and for having partners and friends like that. Glory to Ukraine. Now the statement by the President of Latvia. Mr. President, dear Volodymyr, I'm happy to see you again. Uh, sit, uh, you and uh, First Lady of Ukraine. It's already my third visit uh, in Ukraine uh, after uh, the beginning of the full-fledged war, uh, 24th of February um, last year. Today I reaffirmed to President Zelensky Latvia's firm support to Ukraine in this war. We will stand with Ukraine as long it uh, takes. You are fighting also for our freedom and our values. Uh, Ukraine must, must win the war. It's clear and no, uh, all Western countries, uh, NATO countries and uh, European Union countries are saying uh, victory of uh, Ukraine is the goal of this war and there is no other possibility as uh, Ukraine must win. We discussed Latvia's ongoing support for Ukraine, not only from the government, but also from uh, municipalities and civil society. Practical and political support. Practical in what we are giving to ourselves and political in terms to Latvia's voice in the European Union and in NATO, also in United Nations and in other international platforms. With the latest military deliveries, Latvia's support for Ukraine has significantly exceeded 1% of our GDP, over 480 million euros, to the military support. This is uh, the priority now, because in the next uh, month uh, there would be decisive uh, battle for Ukraine, and we stand with Ukraine in in uh, this uh, difficult uh, situation. We remain committed to working on military equipment delivery options, and we are also saying to our allies that they should increase the military uh, support and uh, to deliver quick uh, what they have already said that uh, would be delivered. We are now training Ukrainian soldiers uh, through the European Union Military Assistance Mission for Ukraine to humanitarian support. Aid to almost all Ukrainian regions, psychosocial support for uh, wartime victims, especially for women, but also rehabilitation of uh, uh, Ukraine, Ukrainian soldiers in Latvia. We also donate uh, generators and transformers uh, for energy needs. Uh, Latvia has committed to reconstruction in the Chernihiv Oblast. And uh, now in the new budget, which uh, will be adopted uh, next week, there is uh, reserved a special line for support of uh, Chernihiv Oblast. Then we are supporting Ukraine in necessary reforms uh, for progress in Euro integration. Uh, we uh, support that um, the negotiations uh, on uh, concrete, uh, concrete um, chapters uh, by the accession uh, process uh, would uh, start as soon as possible, possibly this year. Uh, then we are uh, together with Ukraine when, uh, it, uh, when, it, when it comes to the pressure on Russia. Not only sanctions, but also accountability. And I will advocate for the establishment of an ad hoc tri international tribunal since no other international court can currently try the crime of aggression. 
Of course, International Criminal Court is doing important work by gathering evidence of, of indi individual war crimes. But uh, it is necessary uh, also to uh, try the crime of aggression, which is a leadership crime. And uh, unfortunately, there is a crime in international law, but till now there is no international court which uh, uh, would be responsible to deal with this issue, to uh, try uh, uh, these uh, uh, criminals. And therefore, uh, there is an urgent need also for, uh, for the sake to, to preserve uh, achieve already achieved level of uh, international law that uh, this uh, crime of aggression uh, would be uh, tried by uh, international court. Uh, further, it is necessary to establish a legal basis for the use of frozen and uh, immobilized uh, Russian assets uh, to support Ukraine's reconstruction <laughs> Uh, and uh, for the purpose of rep reparations. Uh, it uh, could be done already now, uh, but especially after the war, when uh, uh, the Western support uh, will be uh, very important in amount, and of course, why should not use the Russian assets for that? Uh, there are over $300 billion now um, frozen, and, uh, of course, uh, only, it would be only just that uh, these assets would also be used uh, for Ukraine. Then, uh, the issue of long-term peace and security. We support the 10-point peace plan presented by President Zelensky. Uh, the peace formula is the right way how we can achieve uh, lasting peace. A lasting peace which is based on uh, international law and which is based on the uh, full territorial integrity of uh, Ukraine in the borders of uh, 1991. Uh, without that, uh, the peace would not be a lasting peace, and we need a lasting peace because uh, I think we should count for a long time with an aggressive Russia and uh, Ukraine uh, will uh, uh, be as a part of uh, European family, um, um, also helping to um, deter Russia from further aggressions. Russia is responsible for the ending of the war, and Ukraine alone will decide its terms for peace. I will uh, stress this point. It's up to Ukraine and only to Ukraine to say uh, what is peace which uh, uh, you can accept. And uh, because uh, it's clear that uh, the lasting peace uh, will mean uh, full territorial integrity of Russia, uh, of uh, Ukraine. But of course of Russia, because the <laughs> border is, <laughs> Russia should go back to, uh, to their own borders. It's clear. It's internationally recognized. Um, we stressed also that Ukraine uh, has uh, uh, every right to seek its own security alliances. And of course it uh, it's, uh, means NATO and vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis, uh, the NATO Vilnius summit we understand that Ukraine's commitment to uh, Euro-Atlantic uh, integration is the basis for the future uh, security architecture in Europe. Latvia supports uh, that Ukraine uh, become part of the North Atlantic Alliance as soon as conditions allow. And again, thank you, President Zelensky, for the opportunity to be here in Lviv and to reaffirm Latvia's uh, commitment to your victory, to our common European values. Слава Україні! Героям слава! Thank you very much. Дякую, шановні колеги! Now, thank you, dear colleagues. You have a chance to ask the questions. TV3 Latvia, please. Добрий день, пане президент. Good afternoon, Mr. President. First of all, I would like to extend words of gratitude for your strengths and 
resilience. I will ask the question in English because I do understand Ukrainian, but I don't speak. From work in Donbas region, and I see with my eyes the situation in Bakhmut and other frontline cities, how it's hard and, 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 and very difficult. And uh, uh, deliveries from Western countries is too slow. My question is, um, how do you think how, uh, what we, Latvia, uh, together with uh, other Baltic states can do to make Ukrainian voice louder in European institutions and also in NATO. Thank you very much. I thank you for the question. And I will be answering in Ukrainian because you understand it all. First, I would like to thank you and your colleagues for uh, going to Donbas and today it's very important to support all of our soldiers um, all the warriors in the East fighting I keep on saying that uh, it's, it's, it's important uh, to understand that the war has not is not over and that the, the people are dying in this area and it, it's a kind of a mistaken feeling that the war is somewhere there, somewhere at certain distance from us. No, the war might continue, I'm sure. I'm confident about our victory, but there's the price for this victory. The more time we're fighting, the more people we're losing. So we are, I'm very grateful for you visiting Donbass and supporting our people in this area. And uh, surely they're not in the comfort environment and surely they're doing everything possible for others to have a right to comfort those in our country and in the whole Europe. And this is something that the president of Latvia mentioned today, that we are fighting for the common values, for the common future. Now, what Latvia can do with the assistance and support. Well, first of and foremost, I would like to once again mention that Latvia has provided us and is providing us with a lot of support. It's provided support with uh, defense and security. It provided support with different energy issues as the result of uh, those challenges that we had because of Russian missile attacks. So uh, our Latvian friends has supported us a lot both at the government level and the level of society, the level of private uh, support. Now, what can we lose? There cannot be any compromise on sanctions. And this is something that we can see happening. It's kind of constantly happening all around. So we're trying to, to motivate all, all around uh, us. And we are very grateful to Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia, and Poland. These countries uh, always support us as much as possible uh, in the European Union. So we are working, we're working with the analytics, with any attempts by, by Russians to circumvent the sanctions, who assists them? Because unfortunately, there are countries, some of them even members of the EU, that are not ready to act uh, powerfully, and that is why they are trying to search for compromises and certain sanction movements, and that prevents the fast victory from happening, because a military infrastructure of Russia depends on that. We have to do everything possible to prevent Russia from being able to produce the amount of weapons they had in the very beginning and they might have in future. But the sanctions are working. It's important to press them till the end. It's important to press upon also uh, with the European partners because um, no matter anyone talking about the size of the country, but it's all about the voice. It's all about these statements it all the international partners and we highly appreciate that this voice from Latvia is always 
uh, in support of Ukraine is always in support of the truth. There's the support in UN, the support in uh, the sessions of NATO allies, there's the support in Rammstein sessions, which is all about the discussion on the acceleration of support with ammunition, with gear for Ukrainian forces. And this is something that is very important. This is this is what the air these are the areas that we need to work on in future. The most important is to have more countries with such strong words as Latvia. Thank you. The next question is by the T V channel Rada. Uh a question uh, to both of the presidents. I think we'll start with the guest. Russia, over all of its history, has created many wars and caused many uh, suffering to different people. Today, we're talking about the fact that Ukraine has to win. This year has to be a year of victory. And now, what? Uh, the civilized world can do in order to prevent any uh, further uh, threats uh, to any nation uh, from Russia's imperialistic regime and Russia's willings. The borders, Russian borders, you mentioned this. Thank you. Thank you very much for the question. Uh, it's clear that for a long time, um, Russia will remain an aggressive country. And, uh, of course, uh, Ukraine should win and will win the war here in Ukraine. But uh, for uh, in a long-term uh, perspective, uh, only the deterrence of uh, Russia is possible uh, through credible military capacities. That means NATO should have enough military capacities, also in the eastern flank countries, uh, to the eastern flank countries uh, uh, shortly uh, in, will join also uh, Finland uh, with uh, 1,300 uh, kilometers of board, uh, border uh, between uh, NATO then and uh, Russia and uh, strong uh, military capacities, military potential can deter Russia because Russia will know that an attack is useless, uh, they will lose. And this is a, a strategy of NATO, uh, which was adopted in Madrid summit last year. So uh, this is the right way how to, how to, uh, how to deal with an aggressive uh, country like Russia. And of course, this is for long term, but short term, uh, a task is for all NATO countries, uh, for all uh, free world, to support Russia in the first place, military support, and now and soon. And we are doing uh, all possible in order that the weapons uh, uh, which uh, were promised by our allies are coming uh, here uh, in possible, uh, possibly uh, a short, uh, short uh, time, uh, so that Ukraine uh, win, will win the war, and then, of course, we will have the new security architecture, uh, not as previously uh, with Russia, but against Russia, because if uh, Russia will not change the aggressive ideology, uh, Russia will remain for a long, ta uh, long uh, time aggressive country. And in order to change this ideology, I, uh, I think it will take a very, very long time because uh, it is um, not only the leadership now, but a big part of the Russian society is uh, infected with this uh, ideology, imperialistic ideology, colonialistic and racist ideology of the 19th century. And uh, therefore, uh, we should be prepared for a long-term security architecture, uh, which is based on our military potential in all uh, NATO countries. And then, after the war, uh, including also Ukraine. Because Ukraine will, after the war, uh, um, be one of uh, the most uh, 
strongest military potentials, and of course, uh, the only army with a long time ex uh, war experience, which is a uh, very, very important, uh, would be a very, very important contribution to the strength of NATO and to deterrence of Russia. Well, I don't know. I think the president has, uh, has answered it all. Still, the aggressive actions of Russia, without the defeat in Ukraine, they will not stop. And uh, this is clear to everyone. And I'm confident that Russia will not be able to overcome this war. Their narratives doesn't work as powerful as they were in the beginning. We have united all of the European Union. Everyone clearly understands this, that uh, such primitive approaches or narratives uh, as if they were coming to liberate our country from Nazis. Now we can see that they're also attempting to overthrow the Moldova's government. Now, I was wondering, is there anything they're afraid of Moldova to do, what the Chisinau may do? Well, I don't know, invade Moscow or what? That sort of looks funny. Everyone understands they would like, they're interested in Ukraine and decline. And they're interested in uh, similar trends uh, in uh, Eastern Europe where uh, and uh, this aggressive behavior in this history always happened when uh, this aggressive country had some issues inside of, of it when they couldn't do anything internally they tried to capture the foreign territories Russia is doing that and we will stop uh, Russia together with our partners, we have no other option. And in fact, we don't have um, other things that we strive for. That is why our victory, the victory of Ukraine and in Ukraine, will stop Russia's aggression. That's my point. We have a question for one short question. So ITV, please. President Zelensky, um, this week we've met with your soldiers in Bakhmut. We've seen your airmen here as well. They've all told us that they have a shortage of weaponry. They have poor quality aircraft and helicopters. In the second year of this war, what can you do to speed up the supply of weaponry? And do you believe that the West will have a long-term commitment to supporting this country? We have, uh, well, thank you for this question. Surely we have uh, all the information available about this war, so we can publicly tell what are we lacking for and the other countries might absolutely publicly support us by su supplying weapons. There's no secrets about what sort of weapons do we have. There's no secrets uh, about what's uh, there in Russia. Everyone understands they don't have a powerful army. It's just a lot of uh, uh, manpower in Russia, but they don't take care of. But let's not about. Let's not talk about Russia. Let's talk about Ukraine. We need artillery. That's number one. We need the artillery systems, we need the ammunition, a lot of ammunition in order to stop Russia. We're not intending to open fire at the territory of Russia, but to uh, destroy them on our territory. Then we have a deficit with aircrafts. We need to start the training missions for our pilots. We've talked about this. We have the support uh, on in this matter with UK. We have uh, the support from Poland. Today, we were talking about uh, the uh, possible support of Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania with the training missions, but we need aircrafts. It's not about, you know, discussions or promises, but it's about training of our pilots and providing us with aircrafts. The tank coalition has already been established and uh, 
I'm confident about receiving a tank army. Uh, we can already see that uh, our soldiers are uh, undergoing the training. Still, there's this deficit. So that's it. We need to close all those gaps and this this is what might help us and to believe in this victory just as we believe in our victory and then